Hey everybody and welcome back to Fast Forward, your daily dose of ITW action straight from the JSA TV virtual news desk. I'm Dean Perrine. And I'm Keely Dorian. Lovely to be joining you again, Dean. Yeah, absolutely. Day two of ITW. Oh yeah! Crew's still killing it. We're still holding things down back here at home, but man, that momentum is only getting stronger. Can you believe our on-site team has done 30 interviews so far on the Expo Hall floor, um, all, all live on JSA TV or on, the, on our LinkedIn and YouTube, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no, um, 30 of them. I mean, obviously, we got a pretty stellar crew over there right now, so they're uh, they're uh, making hay, so to speak, uh, with all of these interviews. So uh, we miss you, um, um, uh, but we are holding things down back home for you. Ain't that right, Keely? That's absolutely right. No yeah. else we, we'd be, would we? That's correct. That's right. And if you're joining us from the show floor, don't miss today's Greener Data Exchange Networking Happy Hour. They call them happy hours for a reason because everyone's going to be happy. We are celebrating the newly announced authors of Greener Data Volume 3, launching Earth Day 2026, a big moment for sustainability in digital infrastructure. Congratulations to our friends there at ITW and to JSA. Um, big, big moment for us. Absolutely. Lots of incredible minds all coming together to inspire greener innovation. It's what I really love about this movement is it just really brings everybody together for a moment. Even if you're working in the same space, nobody's a competitor. You're all building this idea together and it's just, uh, it's beautiful. And that's what the energy and the vibe, that's what the event is all about. Beautifully said, Keely. I couldn't, I could not agree more. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and kick things off. We got some breaking news and big moves coming for you right now. Um, let's go ahead and rewind a bit and break down some of the most talked about announcements from day one. Keely, it's all yours. Let's do it. So kicking things off, we have Baller C3 data centers. They've announced that they are breaking ground very soon on a data center in Boise, Idaho, and it will be the state's most modern enterprise data center. The new 10 megawatt facility is purpose-built, ready for AI co-location and cloud infrastructure. Hot dog, Valor C3 doing lots of good things. Can't, uh, in fact, we're gonna talk about a little bit more about that. Uh, and the company uh, continues to dominate the news cycle right now. Capacity Media has just named Valor C3 Oklahoma City. You know a little bit about Oklahoma City, don't you, Keely? Where I hail from. That's right. it. Valor C3 Oklahoma City Data Center is data center of the month for Capacity Media. I don't know how uh, how do you get that uh, that that award, but um, hot dog, I like it. Engineered to endure an EF5 tornado. That's the big one. Uh, this facility redefines what it means to be resilient. Yep, know a thing or two about Oklahoma City and a thing or two about tornadoes and the damage they can do. Um, so it's definitely a very good thing and lots of great engineering and work that went into that. So you can check out that article on capacity. Yeah. Meanwhile, Bandwidth IG has officially rebranded to Big Fiber. That is a very bold move that reflects their laser focus on delivering next gen uh, dark fiber networks powering cloud and AI connectivity. I, I just had a flashback to Austin Powers for those of you with a, <laughs> of a certain age. Laser focused, I think, was a big thing. Laser, laser focused. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. And look, um, I think it's already been twice now or maybe even three times that um, I've heard the word cloud and AI kick connectivity. So folks at home at ITW, get used to it. We're going to be talking a lot about this um, over the next several weeks, months, and probably years. Um, but let's talk about funding really quickly. We also saw major funding and leadership news yesterday. Uh, one from CleanArc, they secured a strategic investment from the Townsend Group to scale their hyperscale footprint. And Archtop Fiber closed nearly 200 million to expand its services even further. So congratulations to our friends at CleanArc and at um, Archtop Fiber. All just incredible. 
and Dart Points, they have a new growth partner, Nova Infrastructure, announced a majority investment in the Edge data center operator, fueling platform growth and M&A momentum in underserved markets. Yeah, that underserved markets keyword gets me every time because I, I did. Uh, we were talking about Archtop, the two hundred million uh, that they secured. It's to serve the underserved markets. So uh, you gotta, you gotta love getting these, uh, getting that infrastructure to the people who um, are. Uh, underserved or not served at all. I gotta love that. Absolutely. Where are we? Okay, yes. In strategic personnel news, Provident Data Centers has appointed Jack Backus as principal strategist, helping steer the company's vision forward. Jack was formerly at LinkedIn. You may have heard of them as well. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's take things now to the innovation spotlight. Innovation always top of mind and front and center at ITW. Mm -hmm. XKL, no exception. They've debuted their DAT100, which is a powerful new aggregation solution built for high efficiency networking. Yeah, high efficiency, speedy stuff. Um, speaking of speedy stuff, Legrand is speeding things up with next day. You like that segue, Keely? It's on point, Dean. I like it. <laughs> Perfect. Legrand is speeding things up with next day fiber shipping, helping AI, there it is again, AI data center projects stay on track with rapid delivery when it matters. Supply chain is a big deal, and this Legrand uh, announcement is a big deal in a lot of different ways, but this whole idea of getting things uh, where they need to be as quickly as they need to be is a big deal when we're talking about um, moving the industry forward. So congrats to Legrand. Yeah, especially in our gotta have it right now, the same day, next day, Amazon culture. It's definitely a big deal. Gotta have it. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Well, Onyx is doubling down on AI, launching Wingspan, a first of its kind agentic AI platform for the enterprise data modernization. They also snagged not one, but two Google Cloud Partner of the Year awards in data and analytics and telecom. Hard enough to get one, let alone two. That's amazing. Yeah, overachieving over there at Onyx, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of overachieving, Lightpath just helped Miami take a major step toward becoming a global digital gateway. The company expanded its all underground AI grade fiber network by 80 route miles, connecting 12 area data centers and a new cable landing station in North. Miami, mean, which is huge. That, that was a mouthful. Um, lots of really cool things going on there at, uh, at Lightpath. Um, and meanwhile, T5 is helping power a top tier trading firm in Chicago with liquid cooled AI data center tech. We're going to hear a lot more about liquid and AI and chips and all that stuff going forward. Yes, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more right now, as a matter well, of fact. <laughs> so, OptiCool is pushing thermal innovation while Airsys, they continue to advance its cooling solutions tailored to AI-driven environments. So yeah, like you said, lots going on. And I'll tease it again, another announcement coming out from Airsys coming up uh, later this week. So stick around. Very cool. Now let's talk about people moves and industry recognition. Uh, there is, there's been no shortage of leadership updates, uh, including Segra appointing Chad Senglob. Hopefully I got Chad's last name. It's Chad Senglob um, as CEO, while Lancium added a new chief development officer to accelerate their growth. So congrats to our friends over there at Segra and at, uh, at Lancium. Yes, and congratulations to Jeff Sabatka. Vivacity Infrastructure Group promoted Jeff to Senior Vice President. And one more, Dark Points is now shortlisted for the Data Cloud Global Edge Impact Award. So lots of things to be celebrating and lots of people to celebrate right now. Yeah, and Dark Points, man, I'm telling you, we hear about them every month every month so lots of good things going on there uh let's not forget the itw power 100 list a big congrats to all the honorees including jennifer holmes jennifer is the ceo of Link. so be sure to check out our exclusive interview with jennifer coming soon on jsa tv all right can't wait yep well let's talk now about network infrastructure Lots of growth, as we've already been talking about in this edition of Fast Forward, but LSC just announced a brand new 60-mile dark fiber network in fabulous Las Vegas. 
further cementing its presence in the fastest or in the fast growing data center regions. That's three new builds in under a year. Speaking of overachievers, yeah, really about one. Um, Vegas joins Phoenix and now Tulsa on their map. Uh, that's just incredible growth. Yeah. And you know, when I hear about Vegas, I think what happens in Vegas uh, stays in Vegas, but unless we're talking about digital infrastructure, in which case what happens in Vegas is what everybody's business. We should definitely be talking about it. So very, very cool <laughs> stuff going on there. Also just announced, Segra unveiled major network upgrades across the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast designed to enable scalable future-proof connectivity for next-gen digital business. So Segra on the move, always got stuff going on with them as well. Yep. CoreTech is doing some gear shifting as well. They're pivoting from a channel only model to working directly with service providers. That's bringing white glove optical networking services to the nas national stage and just directly to those folks who need those um, very large and complex networks built out. You know what I love about this news is that uh, you get to say white glove. Uh, every time I think of white glove, I, I truly imagine someone sliding, slipping on, <laughs> slipping on the white gloves and saying, how is it that me and my white gloves can help you? It's a, uh, it's a uh, very uh, kind of an elegant way of presenting the news. I agree. And to give you another reference for a person of a certain age, it's like those old hamburger helper commercials where it's yeah. the white glove yeah. guy that was like weirdly making your food. <laughs> Hamburger Helper, the hand, the weird hand. We, yeah. we got Austin Powers, we got Hamburger Helper going today. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, my favorite Hamburger Helper, and you know, I uh, grew up very middle class, very blue collar family. Uh, hamburger Helper was something that we did eat. And, the ham and to this day, I'm 52, to this day, I think about the Hamburger Helper beef stroganoff. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful. It was truly wonderful. I know it well. Yeah, it was a staple of our yeah. household growing up. I love it. I love it. And speaking of things I love, NetNumber. Let's talk about NetNumber joined the GSMA Open Gateway Initiative, supporting secure global mobile communications with an open API first approach. Congratulations to our friends at NetNumber. And if you haven't caught it yet, don't miss our Data Movers episode where we break down how to collaborate with people across generations. It's called a digital infrastructure industry guide to working with Gen Z. It is really entertaining. If you haven't it's checked so it out cool. yet, there's some really good nuggets in there for people you know, who are not Gen Z on how to work with people who are and vice versa, if you're just kind of curious about how the different generations are interacting. Yeah, I love that one. I love it so much. And Candace on our team, she's just mm, chef's kiss. Love, love Candace. Um, okay, I, oh, goodness. Keely, I think it's, I think we're done. Uh, that is a wrap for today's Fast Forward Highlights. But before we go, if you're at ITW, and I know that you are, make sure to swing by the Greener Data Exchange Network Happy Hour. Let's call it the Ecstatic Hour. It's your chance to connect with the thought leaders shaping a more sustainable digital future. That's right. If you're just curious, want to learn more, or if you just want to go have a good time, it is open for you. So check it out. Can't wait to see photos from afterward and hear how everything goes. But cheers to everyone. Cheers to all of that and to everybody at uh, ITW. We hope that you're having a wonderful time. And from sustainability to hyperscale, fiber to future forward leadership, ITW is just delivering on all fronts yet again. We'll be back tomorrow with one more day, day three of highlights and more executive interviews and any, any more breaking news. Kaylee, I'm so excited. It's been great already working with you this week. Let's do it again tomorrow. Let's do it. I'll be here. I'm happy awesome. to see you. And until then, until then, stay tuned right here on JSA TV, your go-to source for what's next in digital infrastructure. See you later.